Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we're going to be going in depth into my week number 11 top 24 quarterbacks and top 24 tight end rankings. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. If you have any questions about week number 11, please ask down below in the comment section. We're going to be talking about our sponsor of today's video, DraftKings Sportsbook, a little bit later. So without further ado, let's get into my week number 11, quarterback plus tight end rankings. We begin with quarterbacks one through eight, headlined by Justin Fields of the Chicago Bears, going up against the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta this week. Back-to-back -back games for Justin Fields as the number one quarterback on the week and four games in a row inside the top five for Justin Fields. Now, despite an incredibly bad start to the season as quarterback 23, 27, 31, and 26 through the first four games of the season, after that, he never looked back because he has been nothing short of incredible for fantasy football production. He's currently the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons defense is absolute cheeks. So I fully expect Justin Fields to take that defense to pound town and finish as the number one quarterback for the third straight week. At number two, we have Patrick Mahomes, Kermit the Frog himself of the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the LA Chargers in LA. This season, he has only had one game where he finished outside of the top 12 at the quarterback position. And that was actually week number two up against the LA Chargers where he was quarterback number three. 13. This time out, though, I expect a much better performance, even with all the injuries at the wide receiver position for the Kansas City Chiefs. I think Canarius, Tony, and friends will be able to get it done, obviously, with Travis Kelsey. I expect a big spot out of Patrick Mahomes. The Chargers defense is not very good either, so I expect a big showing out of Mr. Patrick Mahomes. At number three, we have Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills going up against the Cleveland Browns in Detroit. Now, currently, as I'm recording today's video, the Buffalo Bills are trying to round up the team. There are people being sent to the players' houses trying to get them out of the snow because there is some crazy snow in Buffalo right now. So I get why they moved the game. They're trying to get everyone on the airplane. I assume that is going to go perfectly fine. It might take them all fucking day to get everyone out of their house, but eventually they will make it to, to Detroit. Josh Allen in a dome is some mouthwatering stuff. This matchup, probably if played in Buffalo, could have been really low scoring. I know it's not going to snow anymore, but it's going to be, it would have been cold as fuck. It would have been probably windy, but now it's in Detroit in a dome where Josh Allen could show out. He has had two down games in terms of real life production, but in terms of fantasy football in that stretch, he was quarterback six and three up against the Browns defense. I expect a huge game. For Josh Allen at number four, we have Jalen Hurts of the Philadelphia Eagles going up against the Indianapolis Colts in Indianapolis. Now, last week, I'll give it to the Colts. That defense really turned things on up against the Las Vegas Raiders. But ultimately, the Philadelphia Eagles offense is a completely different fucking beast when compared to the Las Vegas Raiders, who are a complete and utter unmitigated disaster. Back to back games as a top six quarterback in fantasy football. Jalen Hurts is currently the QB number three. I expect a downward game for the Colts, and I expect the Philadelphia Eagles who just lost to the commanders to come out more angry than ever and beat the dog shit out of the Indianapolis Colts defense at number five we have Dickie Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys going up against the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota now despite the fact that Dak Prescott threw two interceptions in last week's game he was still the quarterback number seven on the week through his last two games he's been quarterback four and seven I fully expect this to be a solid showing up against the Vikings now the Vikings defense I don't think gets enough credit the Vikings defense is a lot better than I think people give them credit for but ultimately it's not like they're the best defense in the fucking NFL. So I think Dak Prescott will be able to get it done in a big way this week as a top five quarterback. At number six, we have Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens going up against the Carolina Panthers. Now for a stretch in the season from weeks four through seven, we kind of saw a bit of a fall off for Lamar Jackson because he started off the year as quarterback eight, one, and one. But then in week four through seven, we saw that downfall. Quarterback 19, 15, 11, 22. Now 
By no means did that mean that Lamar Jackson was playing like absolute dog shit. He just wasn't putting up the correct numbers that we would be hoping for. After that, though, the last two games, quarterback 9 and 10, I fully expect him to be a top 10 quarterback in this game. If you wanted to rank him ahead of Dak Prescott, I'm not going to argue with you too much on that. Lamar Jackson's upside is immense, and the Panthers' defense is not very good, so I expect a solid showing out of Lamar. All these top 8 guys I really like, especially all of the guys inside of the top 6. At number 7, we have Joe Shiesty, Joe Joe Burrow of the Cincinnati Bengals going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. Now, despite the fact that up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Joe Burrow started off the game last time. It looked like a disaster. It was really bad. The man threw four interceptions, but somehow was able to salvage that by throwing the rock 53 times for 338 passing yards, six rushes, 47 rushing yards, two touchdowns, four interceptions, quarterback six on the week. This time out yet again, they will be facing TJ Watt. They are coming out of the bye, so I fully expect this to be the best version of the Bengals without Jamar Chase, because we saw week eight against Cleveland without Jamar Chase. Joe Burrow looked like a chicken with his fucking head cut off, but I fully expect him to look a lot better like he did up against the Panthers where he was QB number seven. The Steelers defense is no pushover though, and that's why I kind of put the six guys ahead of him in a different category. At number eight, we have Justin Herbert the pervert of the LA Chargers going up against the Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday Night Football. Last time out up against the Chiefs, he was the quarterback number nine. That was the game in which he hurt his ribs, and I believe that the ribs injury is still kind of fucking with him at this point. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are both expected to play. We shall see tomorrow on Sunday if that actually comes true or not, but they are expected to play, so Justin Herbert, the pervert back with those weapons, should be able to give him a boost. Now, the offensive line there uh, is just getting split like the fucking Red Sea when Moses split that thing. He parted that thing. So I fully expect that Justin Herbert should have a decent game. He should have a better game. But if I'm being honest with you, I am kind of worried about Justin Herbert. At number nine, we have, as Saquon Barkley called him, Vanilla Vic, Daniel Jones. Danny dimes, Danny fumbles, Danny stumbles. Last week, up against the Houston Texans, quarterback 14. Now, I personally, as someone who was a big fan of Daniel Jones last week, thought he would perform a little bit better. Texans defense is absolute dog shit, but this week he gets redemption up against another absolutely terrible defense in the Detroit Lions in MetLife. Last week, he was the quarterback 14, having 197 passing yards, five rushes, 24 rushing yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. This man has only thrown two interceptions all year long through nine games. Daniel Jones's transformation is is crazy compared to what we're used to with Daniel Jones in the past. I like this matchup up against the Lions. Just can't really rank him much higher because even in these super positive matchups, he has yet to be really that smash top five quarterback. He's only been a top five quarterback once, and that was up against the Jaguars in Jacksonville in week number seven. At number 10, we have the short king Kyler Murray of the Arizona Cardinals going up against the San Francisco 49ers in Mexico City. Now, important to note, Kyler Murray appears to be a game time decision. We will hear likely more tomorrow on Sunday about the situation. If you have another quarterback that you can start that you're confident in and we don't hear anything positive about Kyler tomorrow, then you should probably just start the other guy because it is entirely plausible right now that Colt McCoy is the starting quarterback in that game. While I have been kind of digging and making fun of Kyler Murray all year long, in reality, this guy, despite missing last week, he's still the quarterback eight on the season. He has been really solid outside of week three against the Rams, where he was quarterback 22. He's very reliable for fantasy as long as he plays. There is obviously a big question mark, though, on if he's going to be able to play or not. And this matchup against the Niners isn't necessarily a wet dream matchup. At number 11, we have Mr. Kirko Chains. Kirk Cousins, Perk Cousins of the Minnesota Vikings going up against the Dallas Cowboys at home in Minnesota. So when it comes to Kirk Cousins, he's one of those guys that you play every week. You don't expect him to win you your matchup, but you also expect him to not fuck your team over, kind of put your team in a coffin and put the nails into it, right? Kirk Cousins is going to be anywhere from quarterback, I would say, eight through 16. He's probably not going to do anything crazy to win you your week, but he's also not going to end up fucking you over. Last week, quarterback 16, currently quarterback 13 on the season. The Dallas Cowboys matchup obviously isn't the most ideal, but Kirk Cousins continues to throw the rock. This team has fully committed to being a pass first offense. So I like him even up against the Cowboys. Again, this is a game in the dome because it's being played 
in Minnesota. Even if it was played in Dallas, it would be in a dome as well. At number 12, we have Jimmy Guap, Jimmy G Spot, Jimmy Garoppolo, quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers going up against the Arizona Cardinals in Mexico City. But before we break that game down, I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends that are sponsored. They've been on your screen this whole entire time over at DraftKings Sportsbook. If you're a brand new user to DraftKings Sportsbook, you can click on the link in the video description down below or in the pinned comment and bet $5 on any sport pregame money line. You receive $200 in free bets if your bet wins on DraftKings Sportsbook. Now, since your bet has to wins, I would suggest going to college football over the NFL or any other sport. Now, in the NFL, upsets happen. We just saw in Monday Night Football, everyone thought the Philadelphia Eagles were going to beat down, lay the smack down WWE style on the Washington Commanders. Ultimately, they do not do that. The Commanders win. So, college football upsets happen too, but there are much bigger favorites in college football. I would suggest today on Saturday, Ohio State minus 6,000 at Maryland, or you could scroll on down to Florida State versus Louisiana Lafayette minus 2,400. You bet on either of those $5, win $200 in free bets if your bet wins. So back on into things, we got Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Guap, Jimmy G-Spot, Jimmy Pornstar of the Niners going up against the Arizona Cardinals in Mexico City. Last week, up against the Chargers in a game that I really liked for Jimmy G. He was quarterback number 19. Kirk Cousins and Jimmy G are essentially the same guy, but I think Kirk Cousins is a little bit better. There are these players that don't ever necessarily completely sink your ship Titanic style, but they never really take you over the top to win your games. We've seen Jimmy Garoppolo finish as quarterback nine three straight weeks from week five through seven those were his best finishes so he's never a guy that's going to take you over the top but he's going up against a bad cardinals defense he's been pretty decent so you just got to rank him inside the top 12 number 13 we have marcus mariota of the atlanta falcons going up against a putrid chicago bears defense at home in atlanta quarterback 13 last week in prime time on thursday night football two touchdowns one interception the bears defense is absolutely putrid marcus mariota is a little bit more of a wild card compared to these other players like kirk cousins and jimmy garoppolo because we've seen really bad games out of mariota he was dead fucking last dfl in week Four up against Cleveland, quarterback 32, quarterback 24. We've seen some real bad games out of Marcus Mariota, but he does have rushing upside that neither of those quarterbacks have. So ultimately, up against a bad Bears defense, his ranking inside the top 14 is very justifiable. At number 14, we have Jared Goff of the Lions going up against the New York Football Giants in New York. Quarterback 22, 19, and 16 in his last three performances. He is like uh, the Walmart version of Jimmy Garoppolo and Kirk Cousins, a slightly worse version. The Lions offense, though, is firing at all cylinders. The issue is that once they get into the red zone, they stop passing. They just run the ball a million times with Swift and with Jamal Williams. So his touchdown upside is limited by that, which makes him be ranked lower down, even if I think he has a solid matchup. At number 15, we have Mr. Unlimited, Mr. Dangerous, Russell Wilson of the Denver Broncos going up against the Los Vegas Raiders at home in Denver. Quarterback 21 in back-to-back -back weeks 21. Can you do something for me? Last time up against the Raiders, he was quarterback number three. His only good game on the year. So even someone who looks as shit as Russell Wilson looks at playing the quarterback position... He is still able to dominate up against a putrid Las Vegas Raiders defense. I fully expect another solid performance out of Russell Wilson, but it's hard to rank him much higher because the receivers there are severely banged up, and Russell Wilson has looked incredibly bad. At number 16, close out the top 16, we have Taylor Heineke, Mr. Heineken of the Commanders going up against the Houston Texans in Houston. Despite beating the Philadelphia Eagles, he was quarterback 27 on the week, throwing one interception in that matchup. No touchdowns, but this week he faces the Texans, one of the worst defenses in the NFL. So if there ever was a super big ceiling game for Heineke, it would be here. But look, outside of up against the Eagles, Heineke has been sneaky good. Week 9 against Minnesota, quarterback 15. Week 8 against the Colts, quarterback 8. Week 7 against the Packers, quarterback 13. So can you really rank him lower than this? The answer is no. Taylor Heineke, sneaky good at quarterback 17. We have Derek Carr of the Las Vegas Raiders. He doesn't get a Las Vegas Raiders scream because he's been ass uh, up against the Broncos in Denver. Denver defense is just about as scary as it gets. The Broncos have one of the best defenses in the NFL. The Raiders offense needs help it needs a makeover drastically quarterback 15 last week nine the week before it's hard to rank him lower than this because in reality his his floor is around this range 
But the Broncos defense is pretty scary. At number 18, we have Matt Ryan, who's the best rushing quarterback in the NFL. Four rushes for 38 yards on Sunday last week up against that bad Raiders defense. Quarterback five on the week. I don't think he's going to be able to replicate that this week because the Eagles, I know, Heineke, they just lost to the Commanders. But still, they do have one of the best pass defenses in the National Football League. At number 19, we have Jacoby Brisket, Jacoby Brissett of the Cleveland Browns going up against the Buffalo Bills. We have two games left of Brissett until it goes to Deshaun Watson. Quarterback 18 last week in a bad game, in my opinion, up against the Dolphins. The Buffalo Bills defense has been kind of in dismay, but at the same time, the Buffalo Bills are looking to lay a game where this is like their premier game, right? They've lost a couple games in a row. Now they're looking to plant the flag down, have a bounce back game. I find it hard to think that Jacoby Brissett's really going to light it up in this performance. At number 20, we have Matthew Stafford. Could play, could not play. Kind of up in the air right now. I assume he's going to play because he was removed from the injury report yesterday on Friday. He hasn't played since week nine because he was out last week. I loved Matthew Stafford going into the season. This week he gets the Saints defense in New Orleans. He's been quarterback 22, 17, 18, 23, 29, 27, 10, 29. Quarterback 27 on the season. Even quarterback 20 feels a little high for Stafford at this point and without Cooper Cup as well. At 21, we have Kenny Pickett, quarterback 12 last week against the Saints. He's actually been pretty decent, but this game to me, I should have talked about this with Joe Burrow, but this game to me kind of reeks of low scoring potentially. Like a game that on paper we could see a high scoring shootout potentially, but realistically this might be a snoozer of a game. And that's what worries me about Pickett. At 22, we have Andy Dalton. Please, fantasy gods above football, gods, save us from the red rifle Andy Dalton. I don't want to see it anymore. I'm tired of it. Quarterback 26 last week. He has been quarter, He was quarterback two against Arizona. I don't think we ever see that happen again. Quarterback 18. Like, he's been okay. Like, he deserves to be a top 24 guy, but he's not going to do much Ahead of that, <laughs> at number 23, we have Davis Money Mills, the neck man himself. Quarterback 20, 17, and 24 of the last three games. The commander's defense isn't the best. Davis Mills isn't the best either. So he'll probably just finish in this range of quarterback 23 through 26. At number 24, we have Zach Milfson. Zach Wilson, last time out against the Patriots, quarterback 12. I don't think we see him finish that high this week. Uh, this is going to be a very low scoring game. Don't expect too much out of the MILF hunter, Zach Wilson. Next up, we move to the tight end position headlined by, you guessed it, Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the LA Chargers on Sunday night football in LA. So when it comes to Travis Kelsey in half PPR this season, this guy has been just dominant tight end number one on the season. He's only finished outside of the top three tight ends once in week number two up against the Chargers. But Nick, he's playing the Chargers this time. If I wasn't panicking about Mahomes, you shouldn't panic about Kelsey, especially since a lot of their weapons are hurt. So we might see a bigger workload. How could it even get bigger for Travis Kelsey? But it might. Uh, Maki Mock Andrews currently questionable for Sunday's affair up against the Panthers. If he plays, you start him with supreme confidence. He is the only other tight end that I feel like I am just blindly throwing into my lineup every single week and fully expecting a top two performance. That would be him and Travis Kelsey. At number three, we have George Kittle, me Timbers of the 49ers going up against the Arizona Cardinals. To start the year off, this guy was absolute dog shit. Tight end 23, 37, 22. After that, tight end 6, 1, 6. Then after that, tight end 28 last week up against the Chargers. I think he bounces back up against a bad Arizona defense. At number four, we have Dalton Schultz. He was a guy banging the drum for aggressively last week, and he paid dividends at that tight end number three up against the Packers eight targets six receptions 54 receiving yards and a tug 14 fantasy points this week he gets the Vikings defense in Minnesota again I don't necessarily think the Vikings defense is a pushover but I think it's bounce back season officially for Dalton Schultz at number five we have TJ Hawkinson of the Minnesota Vikings going up against the Dallas Cowboys at home in Minnesota tight end 10 7 and 10 over his last three performances as a mini sort of Viking. He has been tight end seven and 10. I fully expect TJ Hawkinson to continue on a positive track towards fantasy football goodness. He hasn't scored a touchdown as a Viking yet. I think it could happen this week 
up against the Cowboys. At number six, we have Cole Komet, who I almost wanted to rank like way higher as like tight end three, but maybe that's a bit of an overreaction. Tight end two and one over his last two games. Despite being an absolute disaster, tight end 64, 58, 22, 40, 17, 43, 26, this motherfucker is the tight end seven on the season right now in half PPR. We have seen really good things out of Komet recently. But this week, again, he does play the Atlanta Falcons defense, so I should be able to at least pump him up slightly up into the top six tight ends. Again, this matchup is incredibly positive, and Justin Fields has been playing downright incredible. At number seven, we have Greg Dolchich of the Denver Broncos going up against the Las Vegas Raiders in Las Vegas. One down game last week does not scare me away from Dolchich, who was tight end 8, 12, and 9 over his last three performances prior to that. Again, the Raiders defense sucks donkey cock, so we should expect a good game out of Dolchich and a bounce back spot. At eight, we have Friar Muth, tight end 16, 15, and 4 in his last three games. Just going to continue to be a pretty average tight end. You start every week. Again, I do worry about a low-scoring game, but he makes up for it in targets because this guy's getting like seven-plus targets every single game, which makes him incredibly reliable. At tight end number nine, we pivot to tight end nine through 16. We have Kyle Pitts. Every week, we have to put Kyle Pitts highly ranked because you're really going to rank Tyler Higbee, Dawson Knox, Hayden Hurst, Taysom Hill, Moreau, Juwan Johnson, or Tyler Conklin ahead of him. The answer is no. The upside's immense. He's been bad, though. It's not his fault. Mariota doesn't throw a very catchable ball. The man's had eight, seven, and nine targets over the last three games, and has had two, two, and five targets in those spots. He was tight end three, though, up against Carolina. So maybe in another really good matchup against the Chiefs, he or against the, not the Chiefs, up against the Bears, he could replicate that. If you're a Kyle Pitts owner, you better fucking hope so. At number 10, we have Tyler Higby of the LA Rams going up against the New Orleans Saints. In New Orleans, tight end number six last week up against the Arizona Cardinals. Eight targets, eight receptions, 73 receiving yards, 11 fantasy points, tight end number six. This week going up against the Saints, we should expect a solid performance out of Higby. The problem is outside of that big game, he was disappearing Houdini style. Tight end 55, 33, and 51. And with Stafford coming back, kind of worrisome. Issue is... The positive is that they don't have Cooper Cup, so they got to throw the ball to someone. So that's why he's ranked inside the top 10, but I am nervous about Tyler Higby. At number 11, we have Dawson Knox one time. If you are with me, tight end 13, 22, and 13 over his last three games. Incredibly bad start to the season. He's kind of bounced back now. I think this is going to be a big game out of the Buffalo Bills, but it's been hard to project Dawson Knox because he's not scoring touchdowns like he did last season. He only has two through the first nine games of the season. Actually, he's played in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only eight games because he was out in week number five. At number 12, we have Hayden Hurst, another one of those guys that you play every week. You don't really expect too much, but you also don't expect him to really be that bad. Tight end 17, 19, 13 in his last three games. They also don't have Jamar Chase, so you can do this thing where you talk yourself into, oh, he's got a little bit more upside, and he kind of does. He definitely does without Jamar Chase, but do I think he's a smash play up against the Steelers? No. At number 13, we have Foster Moreau of the Las Vegas Raiders going up against a tough Broncos defense in Denver. Tight end number five last week, they don't have Hunter Renfro or Darren Waller, so Derek Carr's got to throw the ball to someone besides Devontae Adams, and I think they'll end up being Moreau. At number 14, we have Taysom Hill, one two games in a row with disasterful disasterful as if that's a real word just disaster filled performances for Taysom Hill tight end 48 and 43 but before that tight end 14 6 25 1 14 41 3 this is one of those guys that's immensely risky high upside huge downside right the the ceiling is immense the floor is the fucking basement that's how we talk about Taysom Hill you throw him in your lineup he is a fucking bomb for your lineup. He's either going to blow your whole entire team up and fuck you over and score like zero points, or he's going to bomb the other team and score like 35 fantasy points, which he did in week number five up against the Seattle Seahawks. At number 15, we have Jawan Johnson of the New Orleans Saints going up against the LA Rams at home in New Orleans. Back-to-back -back games as a top eight tight end. So we got to start throwing some respect on Jawan Johnson's name. The man had seven targets last week. The ball's got to go somewhere. It's got to go somewhere. And if Taysom Hill continues to play bad, we're going to keep seeing more. Jawan Johnson at number 16, we have Tyler Conklin of the Jets going up against the New England Patriots in New England. Last time out against the Patriots, he was the tight end number one. 
tight end number one with 23 points the week after that though up against the bills he was tight end number 42 so pretty high risk high reward player in tyler conklin i don't expect him to be tight end number one but i think zach wilson will be looking to him a bunch in this matchup now we move to the final tight ends here before we skedaddle our way out of here skedaddle is a very like scooby-doo-esque uh word like when they're running away that's like a skedaddle scoops i wish i could do fucking um Shaggy's accent. I just can't do it. So uh, tight end 40 last week for Trey McBride going up against the Niners. No Zach Ertz, but Hollywood Brown coming back. So I want to stash McBride in my lineup if I'm down bad at tight end. Like I want to put him on my bench, but I don't necessarily want to roll him out. At number 18, we have Isaiah Likely who would skyrocket up my rankings if, if, if Mark Andrews doesn't play, but it appears Mark Andrews will play. Even with that said, though, I think likely still has earned a role in this offense for them to start using more two tight end sets. At number 19, we have Ninjoku, who is expected to make his return this week up against the Bills. Prior to his injury, where he missed weeks eight, was on bye week nine, missed week 10, he was tight end five, 16, six, 16, and two in a stretch of five games. The Bills defense isn't the, the easiest to crack, right? But if Njoku keeps seeing six, seven targets a game, we got to throw some respect on his name. At number 20, we have Gerald Everett expected to play now this week, it appears. But with Mike Williams and as well as Keenan Allen returning, the the big play upside, the huge upside, and the safety that came with that is kind of gone. He still has the big upside, but really no safety. At number 21, we have Hunter Henry of the Patriots going up against the Jets at home in New England. Tight end 11 last time out up against the Colts going four for four like he was at Wendy's for 50 receiving yards. The issue is that Mac Jones doesn't like to throw the ball to him as much as Bailey Zappi did the Zappinata. When Zappi was under center, Hunter Henry was eaten. Tight end 12 and four. Hasn't been the case without him, but you still got to rank him in this range because he's a talented player. I just don't see him really doing well. Anyone outside the top 20, it's really just sending a prayer to the fantasy gods, hoping they they answer the prayer. And hilariously, I, Austin Hooper already played, but he was ranked at this spot. Austin Hooper, if you look on Fantasy Pros, is where my rankings are, so I just read the numbers off from here. And we obviously have a graphic on the screen that you can look at. Austin Hooper's picture, it looks like you can see like all the way through his nose, like into his brain. It's like his picture is like looking up for some reason. Very funny look. Uh, Austin Hooper had a great game. At number 22, we have Logan Thomas of the Commanders going up against the Houston Texans in Houston. We haven't seen shit out of Logan Thomas since week two. But if there was ever a game where this man makes a huge, spl- a huge splash like a fat guy jumping into a pool, it would be this week up against a putrid Houston Texans defense. At number 23, we have Kylan Grayson. Granson of the Indianapolis Colts going up against the Eagles at the tight end at the tight end possession in Indy. They've got a lot of guys, but Granson was tight end 12 last week. I don't really expect that to happen again, but Matt Ryan does love his tight ends. So does Philip Rivers, and that's why Philip Rivers has like 12 kids. At number 24, we have Tommy Make That Ass Tremble of the Panthers. Don't think he has as much upside with Baker Mayfield under center. With PJ Walker, we've actually seen some solid performances out of Tommy Tremble. He has a sick nickname. Tommy, make that ass tremble is awesome. But the Ravens defense is no pushover in Baltimore. Tight end 24. That's just the role he's got. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you ended up enjoying, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. If you have any questions about week number 11, ask down below in the comment section. And make sure you guys check out this DraftKings exclusive offer. Link in the video description. Bet $5, win $200 in free bets if your bet wins. Make sure you click the link in the video description to activate that. If you have any questions about that, ask in the comment section. Love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great day. And as always, goodbye.